Hello everyone and welcome to our first lesson on our next unit which is over area. At the top of the formula chart you'll notice that we have the circumference of a circle. We've talked about that already in the previous unit. The circumference equals 2 pi r or the circumference equals pi times the diameter. Underneath that you'll have the area formulas for all the different shapes that we'll use in this unit. Uh, you've got the area formula for a triangle, a rectangle or parallelogram, a rhombus or a kite, a trapezoid, a regular polygon, and a circle. Underneath the formulas, we have our definitions of what each variable is in those formulas. If you have a lowercase b, that stands for the base of the shape. A lowercase h equals the height of a shape. d1 is for the first diagonal. d2 is for the second diagonal. b1 is for base 1. b2 is for base 2. A lowercase a stands for the apothem of a regular polygon. A capital P means the perimeter of the shape. Uh, R stands for the radius. A capital A is the area of a shape. C is the circumference of a shape. And any time you see the pi symbol, uh, we will say 3.14, or of course you'll be able to plug that in your calculator. Looking down here at the bottom, we have all the different formulas along with the pictures of the shapes given at the top. For each of these shapes, we're going to go through and label the different variables in the shape. So let's start with our triangle. The area formula for a triangle is 1 half base times the height. The base of the triangle is down here at the bottom. We'll label that with a lowercase b. The height of the triangle is the distance from one vertex to the opposite side that forms a right angle. So this dotted line would be the height of the triangle. For our rectangle, a rectangle's area is just base times height, so we have our base down here at the bottom. The height, of course, would be the other side of the shape. For a parallelogram, the area formula is also base times height. Once again, just like in a triangle, the height has to form a perpendicular line with the base. So there's my dotted line, that would be the height, which would mean down here at the bottom we would have our base. For a trapezoid, the area formula is 1 half, and in the parentheses you add the two bases together, b1 plus b2, times the height. The bases of a trapezoid are the two parallel sides. So at the top I'm going to label that b1 for the base, base 1, and then at the bottom down here we'll label that b2 for base 2. The height would be the distance between the two bases, so once again I'll put my dotted line here, and that forms a right angle. So the dotted line there would be the height. Our next shape is a rhombus. The, rom the area formula for a rhombus is 1 half d1 times d2. The diagonals go through the shape, like so. So that one could be d1. This one would be d2. And those form a right angle where they intersect when it's a rhombus. For a kite, the area formula is also 1 half d1 times d2. So we'll put our dotted lines here for d1, and our dotted lines again here for d2. These also form a right angle at the intersection. Our next shape is a regular polygon. The area formula for a regular polygon is 1 half the apothem times the, the perimeter of the shape. So that's why it's a capital P. So on this one, if I draw in the apothem, the apothem is very similar to the radius of a circle. So remember, a radius of a circle is drawn from the center to one side of the circle. So the apothem is drawn from the center of this regular polygon, and it attaches to one of the other sides, and it has to form a right angle with one of the other sides. Okay, so that would be my lowercase a, the apothem. We know a lot about circles already. The area formula for a circle is pi r squared. So once again, the radius in this case goes from that center point and connects to the side of the circle. That's my radius. 
Okay, so let's jump into some example problems here. Number one is a triangle. So if you go back and look, the area formula for a triangle is one-half base times height. So we need to figure out what are the base and the height of the triangle above. We see our right angle that's drawn outside of this triangle, and we see that the height on the side is 12. The base down at the bottom is 14, and we just ignore that 20 up there at the top. So all I need to do is come in here and plug in 20 for the base, 12 for the height, and then I just finish out my problem here and multiply 1 half times 20 times 12, I'll get 84. Our unit is feet, so that's in feet squared. For number 2, it looks like our shape is a rhombus. Our area formula for rhombus, if you look back to the page before, is 1 half d1 times d2. So I need to figure out what the diagonals are in this figure. It tells me that LP equals 2 centimeters, so I'm going to label that right here as 2. It tells me that MP is 5. One of the properties of a rhombus is that the diagonals bisect each other. So if LP is 2, that means that PN is also 2. And if PM is 5, that means that OP is also 5. So when I figure out my diagonals, my D1 and my D2, I would add the whole length of the diagonal together. So it would be 5 plus 5 for D1 would be 10, and 2 plus 2 for D2 would be 4. From there, I just plug those numbers into my area formula. So I have 1 half, 10 times 4. When I multiply those all out, 1 half times 10 times 4, I'll get 20. So my final answer here would be 20 centimeters squared. Okay, moving on to number 3. This next shape is a regular polygon. So if you look back, our formula for a regular polygon is that the area equals 1 half little a capital P. All right, the little a stands for the apothem. We see it right there in the center of the shape. It says it's 12.1, so my little a is going to be 12.1. And then I need to figure out what capital P is. Now, capital P is the perimeter of the shape. You'll notice over here that they give me that one side is 10. Well, how many sides do I have here? What type of shape is this? I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is an octagon. So my capital P, my perimeter, is going to be 10 times 8. So I take 10 and I multiply it by 8. For the entire perimeter of this shape would be 80. So I've got my little a and my capital P now. Let's plug them in our formula. When I do that, punch that in your calculator, you'll get 484. My units are centimeters, so centimeters squared. All right, example four, our last one is a circle. So we want to find the area of this circle. So we know that the area formula for a circle is pi r squared. So all I need to know is the radius to figure this out. Well, it looks like they're giving me the diameter of the circle is 14. So remember, the radius is just half of that. So my radius in this case would be 7. So let's plug in 7 for the radius. Now at the bottom, it's got two different things it wants to give me an answer for. One says the exact area, which is in terms of pi. So when I do this to start out with, I'm not actually going to multiply pi into my answer. I'm just going to say 7 squared is 49, and I'll leave pi on the end there. So my exact area in terms of pi would be 49 pi. 
my units here is centimeters, so that's in centimeters squared. Now, if I wanted to actually punch this whole thing in the calculator and round this to the nearest hundredth, I could just punch 49 pi in my calculator, or 49 times 3.14. When you do that, you'll get 153.94 as your final answer. So when I write that down here at the bottom, I'll come below here, 153.94 that's also in centimeters squared. So that's it for our notes on area.